to read one more and I'll be just a little bit closer. <laughs> uh, there comes a time in every rightly constructed boy's life when he has a raging desire to go somewhere and dig for hidden treasure. This desire suddenly came upon Tom one day. He sallied out to find Joe Harper, but failed of success. And, uh, next he saw Ben Rogers. He had gone fishing. Presently he stumbled upon Huck Finn. The red-handed Huck would never answer. Tom took him to a private place and opened the matter to him confidentially. Huck was willing. Huck was always willing to take a hand in any enterprise that offered entertainment and required no capital, for he had a troublesome superabundance of that sort of time, which is not money. Where will dig, said Huck. Almost anywhere. Why is it hid all around? No, indeed it ain't. It hid in mighty particular places, Huck, sometimes on islands, sometimes in rotten chests under the end of a limb of an old tree just where the shadow falls at midnight but mostly under the floor in haunted houses. Who hides it? Why, robbers, of course. Who you reckon? Sunday school superintendents? I don't know. If it, if, if it was mine, I wouldn't hide it. I'd spend it and have a good time. So would I, but robbers don't do that way. They always hide it and leave it there. Don't they come after it anymore? No, they think they will, but they generally forget the marks or else they die. Anyway, it lays there a long time and gets rusty. And by and by, somebody finds an old yellow paper that, that uh, that tells how to find the marks, a paper that's that's got to be ciphered over about a week because it's mostly signs and hieroglyphics. Hiero which? Hieroglyphics, pictures and things, you know, that don't seem to mean anything. Have you got one of them papers, Tom? No. Well, then how are you going to find the marks? I don't want any marks. They always bury it under a haunted house or, or on an island or under a dead tree that's got one limb sticking out. Well, we've tried Jackson's Island a little and we can try it again sometime and there's the old haunted house up the still house branch and there's lots of dead limb trees dead loads of them is it under all of them how you talk no and how you going to know which one to go for go for all of them why tom it'll take all summer well what of that suppose you find a brass pot with a hundred dollars in in it all rusty and gay or a rotten chest full of diamonds how's that huck's eyes glowed that's bully plenty bully enough for me just you give me the hundred dollars and i don't want no diamonds all right but i bet you i ain't going to throw off on diamonds, some of them's worth twenty dollars a piece. There ain't any hardy, but worth six bits or, or a dollar. No, is that so? Certainly, anybody'll tell you so. Ain't you ever seen them? Ain't you ever seen one, Huck? Not as I remember. Old kings have slathers of them. Well, I don't know no kings, Tom. I reckon you don't. But if you was to go to Europe, you'd see a raft of them hopping around. Do they hop? Hop? But your granny, no. Well, what did you say they did for? Shucks, I only meant you'd see them. Not hopping, of course. What do they want to hop for? But, I mean, you just see them scattered around, you know, in a kind of a general way, like that old humpback Richard. Richard, what's his other name? He didn't have any other name. Kings don't have any other, any but a given name. No, but they don't. Well, if they like it, Tom, all right. But I don't want to be a king and have only just a given name, like a slave. But say, where are you going to dig first? Well, I don't know. Suppose we tackle that old dead limb tree on the hill the other side of Stillhouse Branch. I'm agreed, so they got a crippled they got a crippled pick and shovel set out on their three mile tramp. They arrived hot and panting and threw themselves down in the shade of a neighboring elm to rest and have a smoke. I like this, said Tom. So do I. Say, Huck, if we find a treasure here, what are you going to do with your share? Well, I have pie and a glass of soda every day and I'll go to every circus that comes along. I bet I'll have a gay time. Well ain't you going to save any of it? Save it. What for? Why so as to have something to live on by and by? Oh, that ain't any use, Pap. Pap will come back to to this year town someday and get his claws on it if I didn't hurry up. And I tell you, he clean it out pretty quick. What you going to do with yarn, Tom? I'm going to buy a new drum and a sure enough sword and a red necktie and a bullpup and get married. Married? That's it. Tom, you, why you ain't in your right mind? Wait, you'll see. Well, that's the foolishest thing you could do. Look at Pap and my mother fight. Why, they used to fight all the time. I remember mighty well. That ain't anything. The girl I'm going to marry won't fight. Tom, I reckon they're all alike. They are all coma body. Now, you better think about this a while. I tell you, you better. What's the name of the gal? It ain't a gal at all. It's a girl. It's all the same, I reckon. Some says gal, some says girl. Both's right, like enough. Anyway, what's her name, Tom? I'll tell you sometime, not now. All right, that'll do. Only if you get married, I'll be more lonesome than ever. No, you won't. You'll come and live with me. Now stir out of this and we'll go to digging. And they worked and sweated for half an hour. No result. They toiled another half hour. Still no result, Huck said. Do they always bury it as deep as this? Sometimes, not always. Not generally. I reckon we haven't got the right place. 
so they chose a new spot and began again. The labor dragged a little, but still they made progress. They pegged away in silence for some time. Finally, Huck leaned on his shovel, swabbed the beaded drops from his brow with his sleeve, and said, Where are you going to dig next after we get this one? I reckon maybe we'll tackle the old tree that's over yonder on Cardiff Hill, back of the widows. I reckon that'll be a good one, but won't the widow take it away from us, Tom? It's on her land. She take it away? Maybe she'd like to try it once. Whoever finds one of these hid, hid treasures, whoever finds one of these hid treasures, it belongs to him. It don't make any difference whose land it's on. That was satisfactory. The work went on. By and by, Huck said. Blame it. We must be in the wrong place again. What do you think? It is mighty curious, Huck. I don't understand it. Sometimes witches interfere. I reckon maybe that's what the trouble is now. Shucks, witches ain't got no power in the daytime. Well, that's so. I didn't think of that. Oh, I know what the matter is. What a blame lot of fools we are. You got to find out where the shadow of the limb falls at midnight, and that's where you dig. Then consound it. We fooled away all this work for nothing. I'll hang it off. We got to come back in the night. It's an awful long way. Can you get it? Can you get out? I bet I will. We've got to do it tonight, too, because if somebody sees the holes, they'll know in a minute what's here, and they'll go for it. Well, I'll come around and 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 mow tonight. Well, I'll come around and mow tonight. M A O W. And mow tonight. All right, let's hide the tools in the bushes. The boys were there at that night, about the appointed time. They sat in the shadow, waiting. It was a lonely place, and an hour made solemn by old traditions. Spirits whispered in the rustling leaves. Ghosts lurked in the murky nooks. The deep bane of a hound floated up out of the distance. An owl answered with a sepulchral note. The boys were subdued by the solemnities and talked a little. By and by, they judged that twelve had come. They marked where the shadow fell and began to dig. Their hopes commenced to rise. Their interest grew stronger, and their industry kept pace with it. And their industry kept pace with it. The hole deepened and still deepened, but every time their hearts jumped to hear the, the pick strike upon something, they only suffered a new disappointment. It was only a stone or a chunk. At last, Tom said, It ain't any use, Huck. We're wrong again. Well, but we can't be wrong. We spotted the shatter to a dot. I know. But then, there, but then there's another thing. What's that? Why, well, we only guessed at the time. Like enough, it was too late or too early. Huck, Huck dropped his shovel. That's it, said he. That's the very trouble. We got to give this one up. We can't ever tell the right time. And besides, this kind of thing's too awful. Here this time of night, with witches and ghosts are fluttering around so, I feel as if something behind me all the time. And I'm afraid to turn around because maybe there's others in front are waiting for a chance. I've been creeping all over ever since I got here. Well, I've been pretty much so too, Huck. They most always put in a dead man when they bury a treasure under a tree to look out for. They most always put in a dead man. Lordy, yes they do, I've always heard that. Tom, I don't like to fool around much where there's dead people. My body's bound to get in trouble with them, sure. I don't like to stir them up either. Suppose this one here was to stick his skull out and say something. Don't, Tom, it's awful. Well, it just is, Huck. I don't feel comfortable a bit. Say, Tom, let's give this place up and try somewhere else. All right, I reckon we better. What it'll be, Tom considered a while and then said, the haunted house, that's it. Blame it, I don't like haunted houses, Tom. Well, they're a darn sight worse than dead people. Dead people might talk, maybe, but they don't come sliding around in a shroud when you ain't noticing and people over your shoulder all of a sudden and grit their teeth the way a ghost does. I couldn't stand such a thing as that, Tom. Nobody could. Yes, but Huck, ghosts don't travel around only at night. They won't, they won't hinder us from digging there in the daytime. Well, that's so, but you know mighty well people don't go about that haunted house in the day nor the night. Well, that's mostly because they don't like to go where a man's been murdered anyway. But nothing's ever been seen around that house except in the night. Just some blue lights slipping by the windows, no regular ghost. Well, where you see one of them blue lights looking around, Tom, you can bet there's a ghost mighty close behind it. It's, it stands to reason because you know that they don't, cause, uh, because you know that they don't anybody but ghosts use them. Yes, that's so, but any, anyway, they don't come around in the daytime, so what's the use of our being afraid? Well, all right, we'll tackle the haunted house if you say so, but I reckon it's taking chances. They had started down the hill by this time. There in the middle of the moonlit valley below them stood the haunted house, utterly isolated, its fences gone long ago. Rank weeds smothering the very doorsteps. The chimney crumbled to ruin. The window sashes vacant. A corner of the roof caved in. The boys gazed a while, half expecting to see a blue light flip past the window. Then talking in a low tone, as befitted the time and the circumstances, they struck far off to the right to give the haunted house a wide berth. 
and took their way homeward through the woods that adorned the rearward side of Card uh, the boys gazed a while, half expecting to see a blue light flit past the window and talking in a low voice or a low tone as befitted the time and the circumstances they struck far off to the right to give the haunted house a wide berth and took their way homeward through the woods that adorned the rearward, the rearward, back of it, side of Cardiff Hill. So that's the haunted house. So that was the end of uh, 25. So they're looking for for uh, treasure, and I've read this book before. I don't I don't know the specifics, but yeah, I don't know. So now they got to be careful with Injun Joan. <laughs> this book is a lot more. Um, I don't know. I would say childish compared to uh, the Adventures of uh, Huckleberry Finn. So. I gotta go to the store real quick. I'm probably putting in some gas or something. And I uh, will see you guys later. Peace.